blessings. Soul rebels. I'm going to give us a little reminder of what that means once again. What it what it means to be a soul rebel. We're going to hear hear about it in this little song, Celestial, coming right up. All right. But first, I want to welcome you all here. I'm just uh, uh, always amazed on Tuesday. Uh, my time is ten seven on some of you and eight on for some of you. And uh, and uh, the the power that the blessings the the grace that that is with us, and um, uh, every Tuesday that we come together to imbibe this wisdom, to open our our hearts and minds more than ever before, to be totally a soul woman and a soul man, right? This is all about soul. This chapter thirteen is all about soul. Of course, so is chapter one through 18, all about the soul. So is every detail of today, all about the soul. That every detail of your, your lifetime, however many years that's going to be for us, right? Goes by in a blink, blink of an eye, is all about soul. So uh, from the tiniest detail to the tiniest atom, it is all about soul. To the greatest infinite potential, that we all have, it's all about soul, all right? Uh, what is this <laughs> about this morning? Um, so we call it the empowering presence of, of, of the soul, empowering presence of the soul. I just kind of giggled thinking about that because uh, it's co coming right up in our in our commentary by Yogananda. He mentions the, 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 the empowering presence of the soul, but it's, again, that's the whole the whole purpose, the whole nature of everything, but specifically in this chapter, it seems to be popping out that we are so, and uh, so soul rebel ties ties right in. But I, if I was um, a tattoo guy, I would probably have that as a tattoo, the empowering presence of soul. I just wouldn't know where to put it. <laughs> as a reminder, empowering presence of the soul. Your remote control, my dear. Good morning, Narayan. Good morning, Lisa and Jim. Good morning. Someone's on their iPhone, so I don't know who it is. Doesn't give a name, <laughs> but they say so well. Good morning, soul friends forever. And maybe it's Vinny because I haven't heard from Vinny in a while. And uh, so, but yeah, it's uh, it's it's quite a it's quite a uh, an interesting situation we are in, <laughs> to say the least. Okay, so I want to start on just page. 869 and uh this is verse one <laughs> we're still on verse one we've got a few more pages to go verse one but it's so worth it and uh because we're learning all about the, the those elements you know that there's a couple of big arch arch rivals we have arch enemies we have and and one are these these five elements you know we know what they are the other earth and it's hard to say that they are our arch enemies, but in the sense that they're mother nature, they 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 only uh, a false a false um, you know disguised form of existence that is that is really limiting and gets us all caught up in the outward materialization of the infinite un unmanifested <laughs> formless spirit, right? And we get caught up in the form. Um, but anyway, so we're gonna we're going to look at this paragraph that we ended with last week, and it, it really uh, it really says why we're in this predicament, why we're in this duality dream delusion, and why it's why it's so hard to be in this physical body with all its maintenance and all of its uh you know all of the things that can go wrong, but it doesn't necessarily go wrong in the body. It first goes wrong in the in the mind and the heart center the emotional turmoil in the heart and the manas you know sense mind cravings and all that in the mind that's where it, where where we get physically uh debilitated you know and it's a it's a uh, exhausting <laughs> i've been using that word it's exhausting oh it's brooke on her iphone see she won't miss she won't miss this. This, this. There's some qualities about each of you that come here regularly, like Narayan and Brooke and the Clarks and Benny and, and Bob. He's, yeah, he's, he's been a little bit on a sabbatical, but um, with this. And uh, 
but anyway, it's just amazing to me how how your soul, how you are really soul. You are really soul. Your soul got you here. Your soul is what, what has you alive right now. It's what made you and it sustains you. And it's going to be there when we just, as a soul, not in a body, leave to transition to, to see what what metal we earned <laughs> in this earth life, what we have learned, you know, what 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 we, we have developed within ourselves. And then that will depend on where we go in the inner worlds. It's it's huge that every action, every thought, and everything that we decide to be here is 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 influencing this this next retirement place, the the, the only one that is real actually in the inner worlds. So um Everything is hinging on this 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 stream this morning, <laughs> and if we can lift a little higher, and and have a little more lightness in our step and a little more joy in our heart. We we have just we have just won the gold medal. We have just retired in the inner world, so to speak, in a beautiful beautiful place. As we are here, that's how we're going to be there, to the T, to the T. So listen to this though. This this is page eight sixty nine again, verse one chapter 13 the gross or the tamasic tamasic that's the dark kuna right quality present in the five elements see there's there's sattvic qualities in the five elements the rajasic or active you know the rajas uh, guna and also there is tamas or the dark element and they're all kind of mixed together it's a mix match mat mash <laughs> a mix mash of the three elements, the gunas, which is dictating to us our behavior, which is controlling us as, as and and has a, has an effect just like Mother Nature has an effect on us, right? So those gunas, and that's coming up in the next chapter, learning about, or, or, or the next one, or the next third, second one from the next one, and uh, it's going to be the separation from those gunas. This is about the separation from this marriage. It's not a good marriage between spirit bonding with mother nature so we have the 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 you know bipolar we're divine animals as yogananda says divine animals so we want to separate our dream perfections from our uh, uh, we want to separate our per perfect perf perfect nature from our dream imperfections the dreaming of this thing that we are a body the dreaming that this that we have messed up the dreaming that we are guilty or something and 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 just you know whatever are these 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 self abusive things that we think about as ourselves you know because it's easy to do that because of what the tamasic quality the dark side the gross tamasic quality present in the five elements produced the physical atoms of the body now there's a little footnote down here about about that particular situation that we find ourselves in that the gross the gross why didn't the sattva qualities come into the body no it, to have a body is not a it's not a high high standard as far as truth goes you know it just means that we have desires for the wrong stuff <laughs> and, and that we haven't learned even grade school kind of mentality yet right we're still spitting <laughs> spit wads at each other you know and uh, so we haven't, we, it's hard to grow. It's hard to evolve in, in this body. It really is. And now you know that part of the reason is that the atom, your very atoms are on the dark side. Mm -hmm. So we, we were dealt a, a, a stacked deck right in the beginning. You know, we were given a, a, a just like the, the Kudu, you know, the, uh, the Panda brothers, you know, when they had that dice game and it was all rigged and then they got excommunicated from, you know, from being in, in Krishna's kind of consciousness and under the the the, the reign of of King So, and they got tossed out from that and uh, had a had a difficult time, you know, being excommunicated from themselves from their soul nature, because they went into a a game of dice with the dark side and they it was crooked it was crooked just like just like so many things here everything that is outward everything that that has us crave something other than being in this present moment of, of soul awareness right is a is is an excommunication from our true nature so we want to separate ourselves 
we want to have Mother Nature. We respect her. We honor her. She's our outward scenery, right? But we don't want to get caught up in the in the in the in the desires for these outward things. Is what I'm saying. So through the instrumentality of the five pranic life currents, that's the assimilating current, the eliminating current, the crystallizing current, the metabolic current, and uh, yeah, I don't know if that's five, but it's, you know what I'm talking about, those, those, those cur crystallization current, the crystallizing current. So the physical atoms of our body are tamasic through the instrumentality now of the, of the pranic life currents Gross matter, the physical body is materialized in solid, liquid, gaseous, fiery, and etheric form, enlivened by its subtle astral counterpart. So it, uh, astral is feeding up the, the physical body, but in this case, it's, it's feeding the dark side of the dark atoms that is in this physical body of ours, all right? <laughs> we got to be careful of that. You know, our minds, our minds are, are restless. And every time our minds are restless, it loses its power of focus. And when we lose the power of focus, we're going to default back to our human nature. It's that simple. So this little footnote down at the bottom says, the sensory organs and powers of perception and action are in their finer form or subtle astral manifestation. Let's say it's even in the rajas, under the influence of rajas or sattva is ideal, right? They, they, they are in their finer form until by future action of Mother Nature, good old Maya, through the five elements and the five pranas. There they are again. The five elements and the five pranas. Under the influence of the tamasic quality, they are provided with an outer or gross atomic. Now then these finer atoms are now because of the further action of mother nature through the five elements and the five pranas under the influence of the tamasic quality, the dark quality, they are provided with an outer or gross, gross, grody atomic covering of the physical body. Man, we were dealt a, a crooked, a crooked hand, right? But that's all part of the part of the journey, my friends. You know, the, the greatest, the greatest, anyone who's going to, to reach for the stars, who's going to reach for the North Star of God's presence and follow that truly, you know, not veering off course at all, are going to come up with, you know, so many challenges and so many, uh, because the dark side is, is, is designed to keep us away from the light. So if we're going to be light bearers and love, and love bunnies, then we're gonna we're gonna be attacked. <laughs> so that's why so few are interested in the spiritual ascension path. Because <laughs> it's the hardest, but the hardest is what drives us, you know, this 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 drives us to the feet of the divine, right? Because we realize that we can do nothing on our own. We realize that we are helpless against this this dark Thomas uh, invasion that was given to us at in the embryo, in the embryo. Okay, that leads me into this next chap, this next verse. Any good medical book dealing with the human body, this is a making of the body by the soul, what's coming up. So yeah, the tamasic energy is, is in there, but we're, we're powered, we're powered, we're empowered by the soul. We run by soul, that's why, you know, empowering power of the soul is a mantra that you walk today because of the soul. If you if you if you if you're distracted today, then the dark side has you, right? And that can happen just like that. So we have to be on our A game. We have to be spiritual Olympians, as I've been talking about recently. And know that every day is a training day. Every day is a day we either lift or we, we or we degrade. <laughs> we either upgrade or degrade. And there's no standing, there's no middle ground. You just can't hang out in the middle and go, you know, I'm going to take, take a rest here. No, the only rest is in your soul. The only rest is in the thought of, of, of the divine. It's, it's, it's the communion with, with spirit, right? I have a little quote from Yogananda, so I might as well, I might as well read that to you now. I realize I didn't have the cell phone on, but anyway, this is what, 
Yogananda says, he said, God offers you, God offers you an invincible weapon by which you can eradicate all your sorrows and suffering. Is anyone interested on the, on the, on the chat this morning? in an invincible weapon that God is offering you by which you can eradicate all your sorrows and suffering. And that weapon can eradicate all of your sorrows and suffering, this invincible weapon. You know what it is? Wisdom, which comes through God communion. You know, one of the greatest uh, delusions and diversions that we have is that the dark side is it always has and it has gives us an excuse why we're not meditating as much as we really you know could be doing right or even missing meditation or just you know let it go by the wayside for a while or not being really present to it not realizing how important it is to focus even for one minute is better than an hour sitting there with a wandering mind okay so he goes on to say this invincible weapon is wisdom, which comes through God communion. The easiest way, Yogananda goes on to say, to overcome disease, disappointments, and disasters. Okay, so the invincible, invincible weapon is wisdom. Now, what is the easiest way to overcome disease, disappointments, and disasters, my dears? is to be in constant communion with God, which means that there are no lapses, that we are every day in training day to remember God more than we did the day before, to be a little lighter of step today than we did yesterday, to be more determined and more urgent for that, that we keep our mind on the divine, right? That we have that meditation. We have our two meditations a day. And then anything in between is, is practicing the presence of, of the soul. Being empowered by the soul as we walk. Isn't that a better energy than to be worried or concerned or fearful of something? Or that, you know, like we are great in the human condition to make things wrong. That something is wrong here. Something isn't right here, right? And we make it wrong. And that's just the... The mind stuff that's just the, and that's the tamasic side but basically we want to be in constant communion with god because you want the easiest way to overcome disease disappointments and disasters don't you don't you i do communion with god be with your soul all day today all day the empowering presence of your soul and you're going to see why because there ain't no body and there ain't no you and me as we understand ourselves. Of course, we're, we're, we're in a complete delusion. So everything we think and everything that we, we, we're planning and everything is, is diluted. <laughs> you can count on that. Until, unless, unless, and this is a big unless, unless our mind is with the divine. Unless we're in communion with God, whether we're sitting down meditating or we're, we're doing some chores around the house, we're walking our animals, or, you know, whatever, watching the Olympics, we are still, our mind is on the divine in communion with our soul, our only reality. All right. So all any good medical book dealing with the human bi the body describes in detail how the physical body is created according to the known laws of nature. All right. So we can, if you want to know more about your body, you can go to medical books. Through physical phenomena that can be observed through a microscope, the infinitesimal male spermatozoan, spermatozoan, I think that's how you call it, unites with the microscopic female ovum, the sperm in the ovum, and an embryo starts to grow. Right? We all kind of go, oh, wow, yeah, we're going to have a baby. We're going to have a baby. Wow. Who, whoever thinks of how about how, how that happened? Oh, we have we're having a baby. I hear, hear that from the many of the of the weddings that I gave the people when they after the wedding and then and then we're having a baby like they had something to do with it. <laughs> really, really, the embryo gradually develops into a fetus, 
during a gestation period of nine months, the fetus develops into a fully formed infant body. The baby is born and passes through childhood, youth, and maturity. After some 60 years or so, the body begins to disintegrate. How old are you? <laughs> We're melting. We're melting. We're disintegrating. We disintegrate and finally die. This is a simple testimony of the senses as to the phenomenon called life. It's a simple testimony. You know? That's what's going to happen, right? We don't want it. We, we, don't want it. we don't even want to think about it, right? But it's going to happen. But this miracle, Yogananda goes on to say, a being could not. So this miracle of what we just described is, the, you know, the sperm and the ovum coming together, and there's a flash, Yogananda says, and then the fetus happens, there's a little embryo and the fetus, and then the baby born, and then there's all the seasons of our life, and then there's the disintegration. That in, you know, in those days, it starts around 60, right? And uh, then we die. <laughs> But none of that could happen except for, here's our title. Are you with me? The empowering presence of the soul. Without the empowering presence of the soul, invisibly inherent within the observable physiology of conception and growth. There is no growth. There is no fetus. There is no uh, body that's formed. There's none of it. There is no life without the empowering presence of the soul, invisibly inherent within, invisibly, it's invisibly, the soul is invisible, and it's, but it's inherent in the observable physiology of conception and growth. The soul, Yogananda goes on to say, with a blueprint of the human being's astral and causal bodies, the soul has the whole, it has all the, the goods about you. It has all the inner everything workings of you, how what you are, all the details of you. It has it. The soul with the blueprint of you, of your astral and causal bodies, and of course your physical body. And it knows that you're under this, 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 you know, Thomas delusion as well. It knows everything about you. Even before you have the thought, it knows what thought you're gonna have. Now it's dis and the soul with the blueprint of the human body, uh, beings, astral and causal bodies, disengaged from a previous diseased physical body. So it left one and it enters the womb, enters the new mother's womb through a flash of life current that manifests during the conjunction of the spermatozoan and the mother's ovum cell. The soul present from the moment of conception. The soul. The soul comes in, you know, it used to be what, what, what was that, you know, the stock, the, the, that kind of, that bird that brings the, the baby down <laughs> into, into life, right? It didn't just come, come down that way. It was a, a, a friggin' miracle, my friends. The, sh the soul present from the moment of conception directs continuously. So I want us to grasp something here, okay? Since the moment of conception, your soul has directed continuously the ensuing growth from the conjoined microscopic sperm ovum cell into the body of the baby and then the adult according to the good, okay, and then the adult. So right now, has the soul gone off duty? Is it on vacation? Or is it still continuing to direct continuously the ensuing growth? And, you know, everything else that that you are able to do physically in this, in this manifested dream delusion we're in, right? Does it, is, is it happening now? Yes. Is it easy to forget that? Yes. Is it important to remember it? Yes. I would say it's your it's what's powering you up. It's like your car is getting low on gas and you go to a gas station. Are you really, really celebrating? I get to I get to put some 
energy or fuel into this car so I can keep keep going. And yet the soul keeps us going, right? And then we travel with it. It's traveling with us now because we're so so brilliant in our in our guidance of ourselves, right? <laughs> yeah, it's tagging along, doing its best it can to help you out of this delusion. Really, it does do that. So the soul from the present moment of conception directs continuously the ensuing growth, the ensuing growth from the conjoined microscopic sperm ovum cell into the body of the baby and then the adult. But now we have some other influences coming in according to the good or active or evil karmic blueprint. Remember that blueprint? Well, it doesn't just have your good stuff in there. It's got all the all the all the problems, all the 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 deep dark secrets, uh, uh, and and the you know not good behaviors, whatever. You know, it's easy. It's part of the delusion. Don't take it personally at all, please. It's just part of the training school. Is part of the school, the school, the earth school we're in, right? So you got to take into account the good or active or evil karmic blueprint form through past life actions and fitting the present heredity. So there we are. Yeah, the soul is definitely empowering everything and 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 directing everything from the moment of conception right here, right now. It is, but we also have all that other stuff. And you know, probably one of the most uh, uh, not inspiring scenarios is that we can be, even today, even after the stream, we can be forgetful or whatever, and that is always making karma. Yeah, we don't, because we don't see, we don't see the connection. We don't, we don't realize how important it is to, to practice here, to practice here in this earth school, in this training, in this spiritual military training camp that we're in, you know, good versus the, the evil kind of thing, to win today, to keep our consciousness, constant communion with God, constant communion. We kind of just have really a lot of holes in that scenario, don't we? And as part of the of the not tamas, that's the, it's one of its tactics is to do anything to distract you from being in in a high state of consciousness or even beginning the attempt to be in a high state of consciousness. Do you see that? Without conscious, intelligent guidance by the soul, conscious, intelligent guidance by the soul, modified by the prenatal karma and the free will of the ego, just like today. That's why I said today is the day that we're, you know, if we want a high seat in the inner worlds today, live divinely. Be with God, not with the world. Be with God. Be with your soul. Any way that you can, you can heighten and update and upgrade your relationship with your soul today is really top priority, my dears. Does that make sense? <laughs> right? So without the conscious, intelligent guidance by the soul, modified by prenatal karma and the free will of the ego and Pray to God and get on your hands and knees and ask for help that today you stay in your empowering presence of the soul, okay? And not to be remiss about that or think that there's something more important to do, <laughs> right? Or whatever distractions you have already planned for yourself today, right? <laughs> They're called cravings, man. It's always the next thing. Seems a lot easier than to be here present with the divine. That's just how powerful the delusion is. The body could not grow without this intelligent guidance by the soul. Could not grow from a microscopic germ, germ into a symmetrical human form. Germ, G-E-R-M, yeah. The normal body shows the presence of intelligent design by the proper growth of ears, eyes, nose, head, limbs, and organs. Without the inner guidance, without the this inner guidance of the soul, my dears, the human form might develop into a monstrosity. For example, the hands and feet might grow disproportionately, perhaps spreading out like the limbs of a tree, right? And then, but you know what we don't see? I mean, the body may not be a monster, monster, monster. 
monstrosity, but our psychology could be a monstrosity. And if you could see what that looks like, right? If you could see the people's anger, their resentments, their entitlements, and, and all this stuff, their hatred, or whatever, it'd be monstrosities. We don't see it, though, but that's what's going on. Wow. Monsters. <laughs> Monsters. All right. The body grows from its minuscule origin into a full-sized human form by cellular multiplication. Through the nervous epithelial muscular osseous tissues of the body are highly different, differentiated, though they, all those things, the nervous epithelia, muscular osseous tissues of the body are highly differentiated. All are made from the same substance, small cellular particles. Okay? It is the soul behind the five pranic life forces that commands the certain cells to be soft brain tissue or elastic skin tissue or strong muscular tissue or hard bone tissue. Did that just happen on its own? Through physical direction? No. It's all the soul behind the five pranic life forces that command certain cells to be soft brain tissue, elastic skin tissue, or strong muscular tissue, or hard bone tissue. Is there anything that's going on in your physical form right now that isn't still guided by the soul? Hmm? Or anything that could happen and in, in, in the ability to walk today, to talk today, to digest food today? Could any of that happen without your soul? Who do we owe our attention then to, really? You know, and the only thing that Source wants, is, and this is a, 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 a poem from Yogananda, but also I made it into a, a, a song, just so that we know what our priorities are. I thought I would sing it this morning. The soul kid a human being may present to the infinite giver, to the infinite giver, is love, love, is love. The soul gift is love. The soul gift is love. The only thing we can offer to the beloved is our love. To bestow that gift on God or miserly to withhold it is man's only sovereign power, is woman's only sovereign power. All else already belongs to the maker of heaven and earth. All else already belongs to the maker of heaven and earth. 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 The, and earth. the soul gift is love. It's the only thing we can offer to the divine. All else already belongs to him. But one thing that we, that we can withhold it or give it, our love to the divine. It's one thing God doesn't have, our love. That's the most important thing, top priority. That's why we have to remember soul, because a soul is love. Okay? As bricks could not arrange themselves into a house, Without the aid of an intelligent builder, so the original sperm and ovum united cell could not multiply itself into a characteristically human habitation without the supervision of intelligence. All right, footnote. 
number two for the morning. Since 1952, when it was discovered that the DNA molecule is the basic mechanism of heredity, scientists have made remarkable advances in understanding the genetic codes that determine the development and the idiosyncrasies of each human body that is directed by the soul, empowered by the soul. The workings of the intelligence within DNA itself, however, is not yet understood how it is able to transmit the necessary information that guides the formation at just the right time throughout life of the myriad specialized proteins that compose all the body's organs and tissues and make possible such complex and varied processes as growth, reproduction, immune response, and brain function. And science don't really know how that happens. It's the empowering presence of your soul is how it happens. <laughs> we are a miracle. We're, we're absolutely 100% a miracle. You know, and we're, we're great actors and actresses, you know, because we'll, we'll, we'll get a, 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 an emotion going with some kind of outward situation that no one else could act in that emotion when, it, when we believe in it, right? When we are in it, it's good acting, isn't it? Right? That's really good acting. So there is a soul that is the intelligence behind everything. Merely through good food, chemicals, human cells could not dispose themselves to form tendons, nerve tissues, bones, and different organs, nor install the sense telephonic system to serve all parts of the wonderfully intricate. This is a nice phrase here. Yogananda calls it the physical mansion for the soul. He's calling the, the body as the physical mansion for the soul. That without, without the, the soul, who, who is the, the, the empowering influence here and the director of every detail since conception, and before that, you were soul. You didn't have a body. You were in the soul. One of the, one of the, the spheres of the inner worlds. But how does all this, how can this, all these systems work so wonderfully, intricately together in this physical mansion for the, for the soul? In this physical mansion for the soul. We're, we're a temple. We're a temple that houses this immortal soul. We're a temple for the soul. We're sacred. We're holy. Hence, it is evident that all tissues made of cells have been intelligently constructed into the human body. As a roof of a house could not be supported without walls or beams, so the bone rafters of the body are provided. The bone rafters of the body are provided to prevent it from rolling around like a jellyfish. Right? As a cement room is made of small small particles of cement, so the human body is constructed of small particles of organized cells. Miracle. We're a miracle. Today is such a gift. This moment a miracle. Love is in the air. We love, we care, we share. Today is such a gift. This moment a miracle. Love is in the air. We love, we care, we share. Right? So, the human body is constructed of small particles of organized cells. Analyzed further, the cells are understood to be made of even smaller particles. Atoms composed of electrons, protons, neutrons, positrons, and mes mesons whirling. This is a trip. Isn't this a trip? This is like at the Disneyland. They used to have a ride into the atom. Remember that? I don't even know if they have that still. A journey into the atom. I always thought it was quite fascinating. The journey into the atom, right? But listen to this. So analyze further, the cells are understood to be made of even smaller particles. Atoms composed of electrons, protons, neutrons, positrons, and mesons whirling in the relatively immense, immense space within each atom. They're invisible. You can't see them, the atoms. And it's an immense space within each one. This is the line. This is a, this is a good bit of just like stretching, stretching your viewpoints about some things. 
the proportionate structure of one atom, the pro proportionate structure of one atom is often compared to that of a solar system. That's a wow, don't you think? These little tiny things that are invisible that the body is made of, each one is immense space. Number one and number two, it's, it's a mini solar system. It's compared, one atom is compared to a solar system. You know, it's kind of it's kind of nice to take our, our our dunce cap off and maybe leave it off. As as Plato says, I'm the I'm the wisest man on, in the world because I know that I know nothing. I'm the wisest man and the wisest woman, you can say, ladies, in the world because I know that I know nothing. Good old surrender of this mind into the heart and to give God the gift of this heart. You know, all, all spirit wants is your soul. Until we give it that back too, we're not going to be too happy here. From this standpoint, it is seen that the human body is a product of minute atoms and subtle forces. Scientists say that if the space in the atoms, here's another blow mine. Scientists say that if in the space in the atoms, if the space in the atoms of physical body weighing 150 pounds could be removed. So you take that immense space inside each atom and remove it. The con constituent atoms of the body would be condensed into a single invisible particle that would still weigh 150 pounds. If you took all of that, 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 that you know, the physical body weighing 150 pounds could be removed, that there would be left over an invisible particle that would still weigh 150 pounds. I still don't know if I really get that, but it sounds pretty fantastic to me. <laughs> How about to you all, right? Physicists no longer define a body as matter, but as an electromagnetic wave. I think it's good to review this, just because in case you lost the aha, you know, mentality and the miracle of motion, you know, and the and the and the divine grace that we live under. What is the divine grace? It's the empowering presence of the soul. That's why we are we live in amazing grace, because of the empowering presence of the soul. Forget the bad guys for a moment and just think of the empowering presence of the soul, okay? Why then does the body appear solid flesh instead of being invisible like an atom? Oh, it's going to get good. This is going to get real good. Yogananda is setting this up. Now, I have, still have that little, little book I'm going to read from, just to give you an overview from Sir Edwin Arnold in, in the song Celestial. Yeah, because it just it just nails the soul. Over and over again, it just talks about the soul. But Yogananda is taking us on a little, another little journey here. You'll see. So why does the body appear solid flesh instead of being invisible like an atom? Good question. The answer is that the soul commands the atoms. Okay, so why, why doesn't the body appear solid flesh instead of being invisible like an atom. Why then does the body appear solid flesh instead of being invisible like an atom if we're made of invisible atoms? Why does it appear solid flesh? It's a good question. Now I'm reiterating it because this is this is really important. This is why Yogananda is taking us down this new, this other journey to get another perspective on this that no, nobody ever thinks about probably, except if you're an awakening soul. Why then does the body appear solid flesh instead of being invisible like an atom? The answer is, is that the soul, the empowering presence of the soul, commands the atoms. There's our director. There's our guide. There's our teacher. Right there. The soul, right? Soul is our everything. The answer is that the soul commands the atoms to assume the appearance of flesh. <laughs> what? 
What? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? I'm not seeing any comments. Did you guys fall asleep or something? Huh? You not got other stuff on your mind? Right? <laughs> oh, God. There you go. The answer is that the soul commands the atoms. This is intense. This is incredible. To assume the appearance of flesh. To assume the appearance of flesh. It's still the atoms. We're still made of atoms, right? But it appears to be flesh, solid flesh. Even as a moving picture being projects on the screen by the intelligent design of the film producer, a seemingly substantial replica of the human body. You like movies? Hmm? Through a mental film, through a mental film of the physical form, through the mental. This is why it's so important that we don't let our mind wander. We need, we need to focus. We lose all of the power of thought, of concentration, when we let our mind wander, when we are restless, when we, when we, when we just detour for hours, maybe days. And never put things in perspective. And what is the top priority? So the soul commands the atoms to assume the appearance of flesh. Even as a moving picture beam projects on the screen by the intelligent design of the film producer, seemingly substantial replica of the human body. Through a mental film, what is your mental right now? It's a wisdom blast, Narayan Perfect. I know, it's a wisdom blast, but that's what, you need the wisdom, and then comes the communion with spirit, right? The constant communion with spirit. That, 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 if, without the meditation and communion with spirit, there's no wisdom, and without the wisdom, there's no communion with spirit, right? So thank you for <laughs> mystifying, loving this wisdom blast. But this mental film, what is our mental film right now? What are you focusing on, dears? Hmm? What is it? And then the rest of the day. There's a lot of a lot of minutes and a lot of seconds. And then some some many hours in the rest of this day. What is your mental film? What are you making? What are you what does the world look like to you today? What are you making it look like? According to what? You got the dunce cap still on? You still, you still not surrendering that mind, giving it back to the divine. It wants your soul, actually, right? But we won't even give up our negative thinking. We won't even give up our entitlements. It's a strange, it's a strange world. All right, it's a Hitchcock movie, really. <laughs> Through a mental film of the physical form and by electroatomic energy, electroatomic energy. And through this mental film of the physical form, through this image of what you think a physical form looks like. And then we get all caught up in the lipstick, we get all caught up in the makeup, we get all caught up in the hairdos, we get all uh, caught in, 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 in clothes, right? <laughs> to, make the, to make the masquerade even more interesting. Through a mental film of the physical form by electromagnetic energy, the soul produces a material human body. Wow, through your mental and this electroatomic energy and your energy, through the mental and this electroatomic energy, the soul produces a material human body, real, not only to man's sight, and hearing, but to his smell, taste, and touch. The soul produces a materialized human body because from the consciousness, through your consciousness, your consciousness, where's your consciousness? Same as same as saying, what is where is your mental mental film? What are you focusing on? What what does the world look like to you today? How did how do you see things? We see we're so we're so identified with our with our ego thinking that we we can't even separate it we can't even separate it out we can't see what a mess it's making of our lives 
when you when you look relatively to how brilliant and how amazing if we can be a soul instead of an ego. And the ego is simply a disguised version of the soul. It's a, it's a, it's a deluded soul that has a job to do as the ego. So it's doing its job, just like Divine Mother is doing her job with the three gunas. And, and the elements, you know, all that that's thrown on us, and not to mention the tamasic energy in, in the atomic, in ourselves, right? In the atomic part of us, in the dark side. Oh my God, Skywalker, right? <laughs> Yoda, where are you? Need your help. Okay. Wow. I think this is fantastic. By further analysis, so, so you know, science stop, stops way before what we're talking about. It stops. It does. It doesn't. It doesn't have this backdrop. This, this other <laughs> major factor. They won't won't address it yet. They won't. They won't claim it yet. So it says here in this next in this next uh, paragraph that by further analysis, by further analysis, the yogis of India, by further analysis than just what meets the eyes and just what, what is seeming to be, right? The yogis of India found that the electroatomic body of man is made of finer, finer intelligent life trons that are condensations of the thought trons of God. That's the missing piece. That's the missing piece. Come on, science, hurry up. They're getting better. They're talking about some amazing spiritual stuff, but come on, let's unify it. Let's unify it, my friends. Wow, can I read that again? By further analysis, the yogis of India found that the electroatomic body of man and woman is made of finer, intelligent life trons that are condensations. What are the life trons come, come from? from? It's a condensation of the thought trons of God. Now, I read this before we even started chapter 13. I read it a few times before we started when we did the next weeks, you know, beginning stages of this verse one. I read this a couple, three, four times just to give you the overview of what we're doing in this chapter 13. So first of all, the aha is in life trons are condensations, the finer intelligent life trons in the body of, of, of the electroatomic body of man is made of finer intelligent life trons that are condensations of the thought trons of God. That's a that's a tattoo. <laughs> I am made of the thought trons of God. Whew. The structure of man and of all creation, the structure of you and me and of all creation, anything you could see out there today, and man-made things too, is a result of the vibrations of the divine mind. God, we're, we're in, we live in the consciousness of God. This is God's consciousness that is us. Can we surrender a little bit, a little bit more today, my dear? Can you take the dunce cap off? Can you take maybe some of those plans and 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 spiritualize them so that the plans don't come before your awareness of the presence, the empowering presence of your soul today, which is moving you and talking you and giving you the amazing grace to exist another day on this planet with the possibilities to have the best day of, of God awareness that you've ever had in any incarnation. Then Yogananda goes on to say, the structure of man and of all creation is a result of the vibrations of the divine mind. Do you have anything to do with this really? Yes, you do. You have free will. You know, to bestow that the soul give a human being may present to the infinite giver, to the infinite giver is love, love, 
is love. The soul gift is love. The soul gift is love. To bestow that gift on God. Here's the only thing we got. To bestow that gift on God. Or miserly to withhold it is man's only sovereign power to bestow the gift of love to God and give it all back and, and surrender this whole human debacle that we're in, conundrum, paradox, whatever you want to call it, surrender it back to God. Is, is it, That's what we have. We have choice. We have choice. We have free will, my dears, to bestow that gift on God or miserly to withhold it. Is man's only sovereign power, is man's only sovereign power. That's it. To give that gift or miserly to withhold it. That's it. Name of the game. To bestow the gift of love in practicing the presence of love in being with soul as the empowering presence that is totally the director of your life, is totally the soul guidance, is totally your higher self, totally everything that is of, of, of spirit, totally beautiful, totally unbelievably, um, you know, beyond the wildest notions you could have with the human mind. That's what the soul is. And that's why we want to we want to prioritize now. Now, if you look at the the last video I put up on Facebook, watch it as I talk about the the, the waves of change is happening. But we have to be really wide alert every single day and dedicate ourselves to what we're talking about today, to this 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 empowering presence of our soul, and see everyone as that soul and and. And I, and I talked about that. Anything that brings you good energy, any, anything that seems to be a, a good thing in life. See, we're, we're habituated to look at things that are, that are broken, that are really screwed up. And then we just nail everybody, right? So we've got to really change that attitude or do our best to see only, only the bright side and follow that and ride those waves where you see them. Ride the good energy where you feel it. And then, and then you can increase it as you go so that we can really live a God-centered, a soul-centered existence, my dears, right? That's, that's the real Olympian. That's the spiritual Olympian right there, right there. So look at that video, really highly recommend it, that I put up on Facebook yesterday. The Bible says God said, let there be light and there was light. That is, the Lord's consciousness intelligently wove light, vibrations of thought, or that mental film, and life force to form the phenomenal worlds of minerals, vegetations, animals, and mankind. According to the yogi, therefore, the human body is made of the relativities of God's thought. The relativities of God's thought. So that's a good place to end, I think. And then we're going to look at uh, how this is still that kind of dream. That it's a dream. We are creating, we're in a dream. And so just like at night, you can create worlds upon worlds. You can create anything you want. But you're going to learn all about that. So if it's a dream, why take it serious? Why take this serious? You're free today. I don't care what your schedule is and the things you got to do. You, you put on that. You put on that, whatever that is. You got to do it so you might have a mindset about, you don't feel like doing it today or you feel you're enthused about doing something today or whatever. But don't leave out your soul. It's the one that's giving you that gift to go about and, 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 and move and, and, and do whatever you're going to do. That's a gift. So we got to be in the miracle. My dears, we have to be in the miracle. So we'll just stop there. Maybe there's something that I can I can read here as a as an ending, as an ending little little footnote, and all the things that I take down as a inspiration. Right. Let me see what I can pull up. Oh yeah, good old Carl Young. 
good old Carl Jung. You know, he was he was one of the the gang, one of the part of the gang that, that did all the the twelve steps of AA. He was part of that that committee. Yeah. But this is what he said: as far as we can discern, the sole purpose of human existence is to kindle a light. The sole purpose of human existence is to kindle a light of meaning in the darkness of mere being. Kindle a light. Look at the picture I posted up on, uh, on, the, on the Soul Rebel page and also on the thing I sent you as a reminder of our stream this morning. Beautiful picture of a guy just sitting in lotus pose and beautiful heart shapes around him and lotus uh, petals around him and just this massive light not just a kindling light but a massive light coming from his heart space check that picture out all right do whatever is necessary do whatever you can today to follow up on this energy on this blessing that we've had this morning being able to sit here and imbibe, be willing to sit here and wanting to sit here because we know intuitively whether that is a conscious intuitively or just kind of deep inside, you just have this inner knowing that this is important, that it's beyond important, it's truth. And the truth is get on this fair ship of truth we're on a fair ship of truth, and the truth will set us free, my dears. All right, and we have a we have a quite a journey. Uh, God bless us uh, for the remaining time that we're here, and uh, wow, it would behoove all of us to really, really, really not waste a minute. And as Shakespeare said, "I wasted time; now time doth waste me." All right, look look at that! Look at that swing. A moment of, of, a, of a distraction versus a moment of giving that soul gift back to God. Our love. Namaste.